Today in the news, some Zen 3 engineering samples, deeper motherboard compatibility, and more. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like we finally have a sneak peek on the next generation Zen 3 based desktop CPUs. Once again, coming from Igor's lab, some details on the next Gen 8 and 16 core Vermeer parts have surfaced. Let's talk about the 8 core chip. There are three OPNs, or ordering part numbers, with two of them having the same clock speed. One of them has a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz. If we assume that this is the successor to the 3700X, then it's 200 megahertz higher. The boost clock for the same chip is 4.4 gigahertz, which is the same as the boost clock on the 3700X. The second eight core chip, which would probably replace the 3800X, has a base clock of 4 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz higher compared to the 3800X, and the boost clock is at 4.6 gigahertz, which is once again 100 megahertz above its predecessor. Moving Moving on to the 16 core parts, there are two ordering part numbers with the same clock speeds. The base clock is at 3.7 GHz. If we compare that to the 3950X, that's a boost of 200 MHz. On the boost clock side though, it's a max of 4.6 GHz, which is 100 MHz lower than the 3950X. Now, all of those chips are literally some of the earliest engineering samples, as you can see from the revision number, A0. And just like when leaks came Came out for Ryzen 3000 CPUs, the clock speeds are bound to go up as revisions and stepping increase. Let me give you an example. One of the 3950X's engineering samples was clocked at 3.3 GHz base and 4.2 boost. That's a far cry from the 3.5 GHz base and 4.7 boost of the final product. Same for the 3900X engineering samples, which had a base clock of 3.4 GHz and ended up with 3.8 in retail. In any case, Case, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a pretty heavy jump in clock speed this generation thanks to the improvements made by the 7 nanometer node from TSMC. And that's just clock speeds. Don't forget that Zen 3 is rumored to have an IPC increase of 15 to 17 percent. Any clock boost at this point is just a bonus. Speaking of Zen 3, here's some news you probably knew about and a little bit extra. AMD has reversed their decision to limit Zen 3 CPUs to the 500 series boards. You will now also be able to use Zen 3 CPUs on B450 and X470 boards, if you respect all of their conditions. Now, that's not brand new news, but apparently some motherboard manufacturers are planning to go even further. According to WCCF Tech's Hassan Mujabe, some manufacturers are working on beta BIOSes that go all the way back to X370. Now that would be really impressive. I know AMD officially stated that there wouldn't be support for 300 series boards on Zen 3, but we've seen motherboard vendors go around AMD before. For example, a lot of A320 boards support the whole Zen 2 lineup, even though AMD has explicitly said that it wouldn't. Personally, I hope ASUS goes the extra mile and unlocks it on the B350. Imagine being able to support four generation of CPUs on one board that cost me something like $130 Canadian, that would be insane. Moving on, it looks like the Epic Game Store is not done evolving. It seems like Epic has quietly rolled out an automatic partial refund system. If you buy a game for X amount of money and it all of a sudden goes on sale, it refunds you the difference automatically. Now, it's not really clear what the threshold in time is for the partial refund, but it's a system that no other game store has, and it's a great way to help out the customer. On top of that, they've also finally implemented a refund system similar to Steams. You have 14 days to return your game as long as you haven't logged in more than two hours on it. The Epic Store is really shaping up to be my favorite game store. Did you know that since last year they've given away over $2,000 worth of free games? I probably got $1,500 worth in my library. And lastly, I just wanted to take the time to take a look at Intel's new pricing for their 10th gen. How bad is it? Well, pretty bad. We already had the price per 1000 units, but I want to see what the retail price is. So let's jump into the computer for that. So I'm just going to go on Newegg.com and take a look at three processor prices, the 10900K, 10700K and 10600K. Um, but first, take a look at this. 
AMD's 3900X sells for 440 bucks with extra savings for with a promo code. Um, and it beats Intel's CPU on pretty much everything except for gaming um, and power consumption if you consider higher power consumption beating lower power consumption. So the 10900K, 900K sells for 529 and it's out of stock. That's 90 bucks more than AMD's chip. If we take a look at the 10700K, 409. So for 30 bucks more, you get a 12 core CPU. That's insane. And now the 10600K, which doesn't exist. Wow. Is it not released yet? Well, I guess that's that. Intel, uh, shame, shame. I know your name. Let's move on. And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.